Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The talk of who Alexander Yusek will face on his much anticipated move to heavyweight, it's bubbled up again. His promoter Alexander Krasiuk has been out publicly saying that Alexander Povetkin and Luis Ortiz are potential options that are sort of 70% chance of facing them. He's also said that Jarrell Miller and Joseph Parker have turned down the opportunity or have reportedly rejected the opportunity to face Yusek. And that's been disputed, the, the Parker one at least, by David Higgins who said there's been no communication. Although as I noted in a previous video, you can check it out, this was earlier today, um, Joseph Parker's promoter David Higgins in November said they wouldn't take that fight, the money wasn't there for it. So he might say that there's no communication but also they've got no intent on taking that fight. At least that's based on David Higgins' public statements from November 2018. But in terms of Alexander Yusek. And I discussed this in my uh, initial thoughts on his move to heavyweight on my Patreon back in November 2018 after he knocked out Tony Bellew. And uh, for my initial thoughts on that and how he might fare in the division and uh, potential opponents and why, go check it out. I've opened it up on my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash boxing squared, or you can click through from the link which I'll put in the description box. I've already made it public, so if you already get um, notifications for Boxing Squared YouTube videos, you have a notification there, but you can either go to Patreon or click the link in the description box. So that sort of sums up how I think he'll fare at heavyweight, and I actually think he probably needs you know, a couple of fights before building up to an Anthony Joshua fight. He needs to acclimatize to the, to the division, to the weight. I don't see him putting on a, a bunch weight because he relies on his athleticism his work rate um, really he's probably just not going to have to boil down to cruiserweight so I could see him being 210 215 something like that on when he is fighting at heavyweight at least initially he may go a little heavier but in terms of the opponent Alexander Povetkin was certainly one of those ones in that video that I said it's a sort of dare to be great move a very big statement from Alexander Yusek to move to heavyweight another one that I like is Carlos Takan and though those guys, because they're smaller heavyweights in terms of their height, about 6'1", 6'2", respectively, um, they are a good fit in terms of an initial step. But I think Alexander Yusek, before facing an Anthony Joshua, he's going to need to get in against some tall timber to really acclimatise against the reach. And, you know, just because the guys that he's facing at Cruiser are effectively the same height as him, you know, between six foot, six foot three, that sort of thing. He's not having to deal with the extra, you know, half an inch or even more in terms of a reach advantage of a guy who he's facing in the ring. So closing that reach, you know, going forward against some of these bigger guys who will have some natural advantages over him it's going to be have to something who have to sort of get acclimated to and I think he can do it he's going to cause some trouble in the heavyweight division but this news that Luis Ortiz and Alexander Povetkin there's a 70 percent chance that he could make his uh, sort of debut in the division against those guys that's good news very good fights although I think the Luis Ortiz one I think that's a name that's been thrown out there. I don't actually really think that's viable. If Ortiz was in the matchroom tent or associated with a, you know, matchroom in a similar vein that Alexander Povetkin has been. Remember Alexander Povetkin fought David Price on an Anthony Joshua undercard before he fought Joshua six months later. And potentially Alexander Povetkin will be on Anthony Joshua's next card. So there's a, an established relationship there. Povetkin himself has sort of said he's looking to be fighting in London in about April. And of course that's Anthony Joshua's next scheduled date at Wembley. So Povetkin, he, for me... That seems like a, a logical move in terms of an opponent. It's kind of a step, a step sideways in terms of the dimensions front. Obviously, Povetkin, a class operator, but now he's, at, what, 39. He's potentially a bit past his prime. And even when he fought Joshua, a bit past his prime, but still a top-rate heavyweight. And certainly a tough challenge for Alexander Yusik. And o Alexander Yusik, who fought Tony Bellew recently, would get a lot of credit by taking on a Povetkin on an undercut with you know all the world watching and then beating Povetkin that would be I think a an ideal way to come into the division obviously you know you have to get through the fight and win it and it has to get made but I think some of these other names that have been mentioned and obviously there's some other wriggle room there he said 70% chance he didn't say 100% chance so they could be talking to other people at the moment and no doubt are because you have to have contingencies 
but Pavetkin, I like that option. Ortiz, I don't really think that's probably on the table. If Ortiz is in the matchroom tent, certainly could be. If it's a really massive offer, it could be. But I just don't think Luis Ortiz is really in the conversation, just my own personal opinion, for a Usyk fight right now. It's likely to be someone who's either in the matchroom stable or who's been working with matchroom, you know, closely to some extent. And that's why Pavetkin and also Carlos Takam, for me, they're logical options. And in terms of, you know, the height and dimensions issue coming up to heavyweight, they could be guys that Alexander Usyk could look very good against. Dillian White won't be the guy that Usyk will be facing. He's also made some somewhat controversial comments. And this was to IFL TV, um, but it's summarized here on BoxingNews24.com. He's a good fighter, but no one knows who he is. He speaks no English. What I'm saying is he's not really a big fight for me. The hardcore boxing fans will watch it. But imagine trying to sell Usyk, Dillian White to the general public. In some ways... I can uh, sympathize with White with what White is trying to say, but realistically, I actually think that you know he's he's really playing that down. We just saw a, a pay per view with Alexander Usyk and Tony Bellew. I think a Usyk and Dillian White fight is a much bigger fight and probably an easier sell than the Tony Bellew one, just for the fact that you know it would be at heavyweight. This guy's the cruiserweight king. And if, if Usyk wasn't a big fighter, if no one knew him, if he didn't have any currency, you know, in boxing, how would he be on pay-per-view in the United Kingdom facing Tony Bellew? He's either a pay-per-view fighter or he's, or he's not. And he's just been on pay-per-view. So I actually think with the, the right promotion and the right fights leading up to that, probably not next. Actually, that's a very big fight. And many would probably favor Alexander Usyk to win that. That might be a controversial comment to some, but his work rate and what he does in the ring there, he's a tough cover for any of the top guys in the heavyweight division. Even though guys, you know, that he's going to be a smaller man compared to a lot of heavyweights, you know, he's going to give them trouble. And in White's case, White is six foot three. He's about the same size as Alexander Usyk. Obviously, he'd outweigh him by probably about... 35 40 pounds something like that uh Usyk, he would really be working white over and that could be a case where dillian white yeah if they fought could end up gassing out but some of these comments you know i can see what he means but i don't really actually agree with him here in terms of the no english alexander Usyk's english is actually pretty decent so i'm not sure how up on Usyk he is or maybe he's just trolling a bit and elsewhere in that interview with IFL TV, also summarized here, he's uh, outlined the five possible fighters for him, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Jarrell Miller, Dominic Brazil, and Deontay Wilder. And it notes here, no Luis King Kong Ortiz. And actually, that would be a fight I think most people would want to see. But I guess that kind of falls into the same boat as his comment that, you know, Luis Ortiz doesn't speak English. And I actually think maybe an Ortiz fight over a Usyk fight in the UK is maybe a harder sell than the Usyk one. Usyk's already an established guy. He's the cruiserweight king, undisputed. He's just had a pay-per-view in the United Kingdom. He's not entering that market on pay-per-view for the first time. So I think the second time around, it's a much easier sell than potentially the first time, especially because he upset Tony Bellew and knocked him out in stunning fashion. And I've seen a few comments um, just recently saying that Usyk would struggle at heavyweight because Tony Bellew dominated him. I didn't, you know, Tony Bellew put up a very good effort, but you have to actually look at what happened. Usyk, you know, let Tony Bellew blow himself out and then he took over in the, you know, final couple of rounds of that fight and knocked him out. What was it, the seventh round, eighth round? You know, Tony Bellew certainly had a few good rounds and, you know, certainly won a few rounds. But Alexander Usyk, he took his time, he let Tony Bellew do his thing, and ultimately he took over and knocked him out. I thought it was a pretty measured performance by Usyk. So the whole he struggled against Bellew, I don't buy that narrative one bit. But in terms of Alexander Usyk, yeah... I like the prospect of an Alexander Povetkin fight. I also like the prospect of a Luis Ortiz fight, even though I think that's more remote. 
Jarrell Miller, well, he doesn't seem to want to fight anyone with a pulse until he gets a title shot. And Joseph Parker, that is a good fight between him and Yusek, but as Higgins has said, there's no money in it at the moment, both being foreign fighters. If they were to do it in the UK, it wouldn't do as well if it was a British fighter, say, versus Yusek. So we'll have to see where things go. But just a few thoughts, and I wanted to do an update. And if you want to check out my broader thoughts on Alexander Yusek and moving up to heavyweight, Go check out that uh, video that I have made public from my Patreon. Link in the description or go to patreon.com forward slash boxing squared. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.